And MongoDB is announcing the launch of its new AI applications program. This initiative bringing together major players in the AI industry to assist other companies in integrating generative AI into their applications. They're not alone. Increasingly, companies are partnering with AI technology to enhance their business. Amazon recently announced the publicly availability of their AI-powered assistant, Colt Q. And joining us right now is Dave Echeria. He's a uh, MongoDB's president and CEO. Good morning to you. It's nice to see you. Great to be here. Thank so, you. So uh, we were just talking off camera about the different different models. This is about, in some ways, integrating with with various models. Right, right now, how do you how do you stack rank the various models out there and what's happening? Well, right now, I would say Facebook has really come out with a very impressive version with Llama three. Um, the performance benchmarks seem quite impressive. It's open source. And moreover, they've basically committed to investing somewhere between 35 to $40 billion a year to continue to innovate and build new models. And so they're working on a higher right. performant so model. So it's, it's kind of... There is a view that this could completely and utterly undermine all of these paid, closed models, which is to say, if, if Llama 3 is as close as people are saying to whatever you think, you know, ChatGPT4 looks like today or Claude 3 looks like, or Amazon working on Olympus, or Gemini, then what? Well, I think this is the problem customers have, is they're feeling overwhelmed. It seems like every week there's a new advancement. A couple of weeks ago, Mistral came out with their um, very low-cost but high-performing model. Before that, Anthropic. And then there's rumors that GPT-5 is around the corner, so everyone's right. waiting for what, what's going to come. And so the whole point of this program is to address customers feeling overwhelmed by essentially doing three things, coming out with a reference architecture for particular use cases, built-in integrations to reduce integration risk, and technical expertise to help customers really get started quickly. And we have all the hyperscalers as partners. We have Anthropic, Cohere, and a bunch of cutting-edge you know, tech companies focused on orchestration services, um, as well as um, um, fine-tuning services to really fine-tune models for particular use cases. You know, we had talked to an analyst earlier about Amazon. Do you think that all of these things become commoditized ultimately? Well, there's some talk that the foundational model space is one of the most quickly depreciating assets out there, given all the money being spent on previous generations, and all of a sudden now you have these new models that are so far superior, no one's maybe even using even Llama 2 or um, GPT-2, et cetera. So I think the what we're seeing, though, is that typically when a new technology comes out, value accrues at the bottom layer first, right? You're seeing NVIDIA post amazing numbers. Right. OpenAI has been the most talked about company since they introduced ChatGPT 18 months ago. Um, uh, but what we're seeing customers saying is that when do I get the value? Where do I get the return? And the return will be coming, coming through the applications that are built on top of that infrastructure. Right. And so we're now starting to see the build out of those applications, right. either consumer apps or now enterprises. Okay, so, but th which raises a whole other question. There's a lot of startups out there and uh, even large enterprise companies that are thinking about building apps on top of these large language models. Right. But there's a separate question, which is to say, is it likely that when we get the next version of these large language models, that they effectively are going to be able to do what these apps do already? <laughs> Meaning you're going to be able to build your own app Meaning there's, that there's no real moat. If we, if we get to, the, I mean, I'm not even talking about getting to sort of AGI. I'm, I'm just saying at some point, you might say to yourself, what are the paths I should or should not go down? Because, you know, if I look at, look at my watch, there's going to be a new version of whatever it is, and it's going to be able to do this by itself. Well, I think, I, think we're, I think there's clearly a trend where we'll go to what people call agentic workloads, where agents can now take actions on behalf of, the end user and be able to do things autonomously. But I think we're a little bit way, ways out. And so, again, people do need to build apps um, and they do need to figure out how to, for example, enrich customer experiences, how to essentially um, drive more cost out of the business and to find new ways to drive right. growth. So what's a, what's a cool example of some, some apps that you think have some, some great value today? Let me give you an example. We have an automotive company who's built an app that, that listens to the noise of your car. So if you're having a problem with your car, right. they can, you can record the noise in your car and essentially uh, get quick diagnosis of what the potential problem is because that's they have cool. this repository of all the potential issues your car may be having. That's cool. That, so, okay. so that's an example of like using AI very intelligently to deliver better, a better customer experience. For EV. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so that's one example. We have other customers who are essentially using uh, AI to figure out how to look at uh, health reports and be able to provide better diagnosis for patients so that they don't have to spend all this time mm -hmm. trying to figure out what's wrong with them. 
Um, and so, and then we have two banks who are using our technology to radically reduce the time to, uh, and cost of migrating off legacy platforms that are old, brittle, and expensive to new more modern platforms. That's Bendigo Bank and Adelaide Bank in Australia who are actually working with us to do this. So, so people are quite motivated to do this, but it's still very, very early in days. In those instances, they're training off of the data from these, these enterprises, these individual enterprises. They're not just using the large language model to figure this out. Well, there's, there, so there's a the bunch of use cases. There's like customer support use cases where you can automate the right. interaction of, of, of service support. There's um, um, automation use cases. And then there's what people call enterprise RAG. And so enterprise RAG, or retrieval augmented generation, is you're marrying private data with the public data and reasoning of the models, right? So in that case of that automotive company, they have the private data of what all those noises sound like and what are the right. potential issues, but they can marry that private data with the public data to generate incredible value. And you're going to see a lot more enterprise RAG use cases being deployed because data is the new gold and people want to use their data for, for a compelling advantage.